Welcome back. This is 8 2, the chi square test and cautions. We're going to break this up into three parts. The first part of these is going to be the chi square test for independence. This one right here, folks. So it says whether the two variables are independent or related. All right, so this is actually stuff we did in 7 1, so it's really no different. I'm just going to give you yet another example. The only other thing I want to mention here is that the uh, data are random and from a single group and you'll see kind of what that means you're gonna have to do a few problems to really get it and then also the subjects are ca categorized in, according to two variables and of course we'll see what that looks like again you need lots of examples to really get those two bullet points figured out but the hypothesis are almost always the same in that the null hypothesis the two variables of interest are independent right? So neither one makes the other move in value at all. all right? and you'll see how that works. Uh, or the alternative hypothesis, which is that the two variables of interest are related. Okay, So they're not independent. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's get into that. Jump into Excel. In here, uh, off to the right, I've sort of created the area where our hypothesis test is going to go. In fact, when you do one of these on the final exam, um, this is what you're going to be filling out, right? The hypothesis test, just like we've done on almost everything so far. So, uh, the only thing really to do, the, th the new thing, is figuring out this, chi-squared. What is that value? And then using it to calculate our p-value. All right. So, just as we did in 8-1, uh, let's just jump in to these hypothesis statements. So for the null hypothesis, uh, we're just going to type all this out. The null hypothesis, uh, we're going to say that the region, whether it be west, midwest, south, or northwest, um, and the voting preferences are independent of one another. The alternative hypothesis is the complete opposite of that uh, region and voting preference are related fairly straightforward for your hypothesis test statements conditions this is a little simpler uh, subjects are selected independently and all cells contain greater than five part where we finally get into the cool calculations are here. So we need to calculate chi-squared. And the way that we do that, if you'll remember from 8.1, is we take uh, the row total, and if you use F4, it'll automatically give you the dollar signs. But whichever one the dollar signs in front of is the one that will freeze. So we want to freeze it in this column. We want it to be able to go up and down when we drag this cell, but this freezes the column. So that's what the dollar sign is. You don't have to use the dollar sign. You can type every one of these, but this is just a faster way of doing it. Take that. We're going to multiply it by the column total. This time we want to freeze uh, it from going up and down. So we want to freeze the nine instead of, uh, so we can do that. So the C will, it'll be able to move from side to side, but uh, the nine will freeze it in that row. And then we divide it by the grand total. This one, we're going to freeze both of them. We don't want it to move at all. All right. So there's our number. This is expected. Remember, these are expected counts. So the reason why I did the dollar signs is so I could grab this little tiny square drag it over and it automatically gets the right formulas and I can drag it down as well and it gets all the right formulas in place all right so that's our expected counts now we have to calculate the chi squared for each of these so we're going to say equals and remember it's the observed minus the expected counts we're going to square that number and then divide all that by the expected counts. And there is that number for that cell. And we're going to drag it over, drag it down, 
and we have the number for each of them. Now to get this chi-squared number over here, go over here, grab all those cells again, hit enter. Degrees of freedom is uh, going to be equal to the no number of rows we have. The number of rows we have is 4 minus 1 times the number of columns we have, which is 3 minus 1. And that will give us 6. All right, so this is where we put our chi-square formula in. We're going to use chi-square.dist.rt. And x is this chi-square value, comma, degrees of freedom, enter. And remember this e negative 14 means it's 10 to the negative 14th power, which means this number is really, 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 really close to zero. Cool, step three is done. Step four, based on knowing that this is really, 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 really close to zero, we can say that we will reject uh, the null hypothesis. All right? And of course you can write that out in a sentence. I would look at these solutions to see how to do that because you'll need to you'll need to do that on the final exam. That's it. That's the uh, chi-square test for independence. All right. So, uh, if you have any questions, send me an email. Otherwise, uh, see you in the next video.